it's time for the Switch video that I've been longing to do. So let's uh, get started without further ado. We have 62 games to get through. Let's do it now. Number one, and this is in alphabetical order, by the way. I actually do have my Switch collection alphabetized pretty well. So I'll be periodically taking them off the shelves, pausing in between. So far, I have two right now. Let's get with the first one, that being a magical high school girl. Now. I will only talk about this briefly, and the reason why I'll talk about this briefly is because I did already make a video on my channel playing through the game, and I did get my thoughts on the game as I was playing it. It was a pretty funny video. I'll, I'll put the link up in the card somewhere, maybe right here or here. Who knows? Anyway, um, the game itself is pretty good. I'll ignore that part. Let me talk about the experience that it took to get this game. The actual game itself, getting that game, I ordered it from Strictly Limited. Strictly Limited is a limited run equivalent, uh, except for they operate out of Germany, and they typically do more imports and retro physicals, as well as like a few digital exclusives. And they do, you know, uh, PS4 and uh, Switch, and that's about it. And they also do retro stuff for the SNES, NES, you know, and TurboGrafx-16, all this other stuff dreamcast maybe who knows anyway uh a magical high school girl was ordered and it shipped at one point but it was lost along the way i'm assuming it got stolen and basically i kept messaging them being like hey can i get a refund or can i get a new copy can i get a refund can i get a new copy i contacted my post office they're like we can't we can't find it we don't know where it is so eventually the lady's just like well how about you just file it with paypal and get a refund that way and so i did i ended up filing a, a, a complaint with paypal and eventually they just didn't respond and i got my refund and now now the weird part is eventually they did respond but i don't know if they were aware that i'd already gotten a refund they said do you want a refund or do you want a new, a new copy of the game and i'm like well they, they didn't respond for the longest time so you know what i'm gonna ask for a new game i'm gonna get a free game essentially because i already used the money at that point to buy another switch game what game i have no idea so i just bought a new switch game and then got an, another switch game for free that's what happened they ended up sending this game in the mail <laughs> i didn't pay anything for it it's freaking sweet but i'm not using them again because they were just so bad with customer service they were so bad like it was quite clear that like my game was lost and they took freaking forever doing anything about it it took like at least three months i want to say i'm not even exaggerating it took freaking forever uh but anyway yeah the game comes with uh with a manual manual squad hype so yeah definitely uh definitely check it out uh if you're gonna check it out check it out digitally do not use strictly limited i repeat do not use strictly limited next up following the manual hype we have uh, akiba's trip hd hellbound and debriefed as in like pants ha 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 very funny uh this game is interesting i have a little bit of history with this game uh, i used to own a psp unfortunately that psp is rust and pepperoni uh and the psp itself was homebrew modified it ran custom firmware and this game i don't know if you knew this it was exclusive to the psp in the japanese region now uh eventually it did get ported over to the west but during the meantime somebody was able to get a, uh, a legal ISO of it, and I was able to put it legally onto my normal firmware on PSP and play it. I didn't really like it back then, so again, I thought nothing of it. This game, alongside the CD, which I did cover in my CD video and an art book, were all packaged into a special edition going for like dirt cheap we're talking like i think like 20 bucks in total for all that package and i'm like hell yeah but the thing is um it took freaking forever to come eventually i just ordered it from a third party seller just to get it to come here and it did but yeah i i got the box i got the uh cd and the art book i i'm getting rid of the box in the art book because i don't need all that freaking ridiculous space taking up my shelf i mean it was like absurd I'll, maybe i'll show a picture it was like how do you fit that on a switch shelf like honestly the game itself was uh quite all right Right, uh, upon first uh, playing. It reminds me a bit of uh, Yakuza mixed with like some low budget kind of like uh, like PS2 era with a bit of like the PSP sort of anime style game that kind of permeated the, the scene back then. I mean, it's quite nice. Uh, it's not the best, but honestly, it's it's worth just a, just a guilty pleasure play, truth be told. I forgot to show the manual. What the hell is my problem, dude? Here is the lovely, lovely manual. Moving on, we have Axiom Verge 2 by Limited Run. Those greedy bastards, them. Yeah, hopefully they don't see this so they don't cancel my order that I still have from them. But I'm never ordering from them again. Never. They're a scam, I tell you. A scam. 
And Axiom Verge 2 is good. Uh, I, I didn't like the first game. I, I like the second game, though. And if you want to see the manual, baby, well, here it comes. Manual time. Let's go, baby. Yeah, it's freaking hype. Anyway, uh, oh, wait till you see the Dusk manual. That shit's pathetic. That's also from Limited Run. That's gonna come up very soon. I just got that. Anyway, um, Axiom Verge 2 is a great Metroidvania. I'm not typically very much into Metroidvanias, but I think this Metroidvania is pretty good, all things considered. But in general, uh, I tend to avoid Metroidvanias uh, because they just don't typically strike my fancy. But the, but Axiom Verge 2, I like. Now, it, there was a package that came with Axiom Verge 1 and 2, and there's the one that just came with one. I just went with the one that came with two because I just wanted two. I mean, I know that sounds silly, but I mean, it was cheaper and I wanted it. So there you go. Um, but it doesn't matter because we're never ordering from them ever again. Uh, no more uh, spotlight for you, Axiom Verge. And no more spotlight for you, Limited Run, until the next one. Arr. This is yet another limited kind of game except for this is one i had previously never even heard of called red art games and it's butcher the funny thing about this game is it goes on sale for like five dollars i paid like a, an exorbitant amount of money definitely the cheapest game digitally that i own in my collection so don't pick it up physically just buy it digitally it's super cheap on switch it's one of the few actual games that wasn't marked up to high heaven on switch uh although I, I say that though but prices have been better recently i want to say uh but butcher is like uh is like a mix between uh duke nukem classic duke nukem not like the not like the fps like the platformer and uh, it's pretty good it's got that doom violence from like the 2016 version that i really like it's like brutal as hell it's kind of like uh, another game you'll see eventually that being uh carry on thank you the name of the game is Carry On. It's similar to that. Except for, obviously you don't play as a giant monster. But similar art style and simil similar level of gore. No manual. Like, no bitches, get it? Yeah, uh, no manual for this one. Cadence of Hyrule, the first of many Nintendo published titles in my collection. Although this is technically not even published by Nintendo, it's published by Brace Yourself Games. But it is a Nintendo property, let's put it that way. First of many Nintendo properties. Uh, this one, uh, I have not played very much. I feel bad about it, but I mean, the, the dancing segments are very hard to get used to. I, I don't have the best rhythm when it comes to that, but I love uh, old school Zelda. I mean, I, I've only recently gotten into it. Uh, and another game that I have in my collection, Link's, uh, Link's Awakening, I really like. So we'll get to that. But uh, Cadence of Hyrule, uh, I got it at a uh, Meyer, believe it or not. I got it at Meyer for super cheap. It was on clearance, Clarence. And so I got it for about like like twenty dollars I wanna say, which is typically not what it goes for. Oh yeah, and wait till you see the next game I got from Meyer. That game I got is uh st -st 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 steel. Games of Hyrule, uh great music, uh great gameplay. But other than that, uh not much to say about it. Nothing not no cool story associated with this one or any bashing or anything of the sort. The Caligula Effect Deuce. I've never played the Caligula Effect One. Uh this is an NIS release. This is one of many you will see from NIS. I love collecting their games. They are kind of expensive though but uh i do like collecting them this one's kind of a disappointing one because if you look inside it just got like a few little inserts and no real manual which is real disappointing it's one of those kind of budget nis releases for sure so honestly uh yeah the game itself story-wise it sucks um the gameplay is very good it's kind of like a uh half real-time half turn-based rpg sort of like an active rpg system you know turn-based wise that is uh, and I do like the power-ups and uh, not exactly the music, but the music itself though is also very annoying. Uh, but, you know, it wasn't that expensive and uh, it's actually one of the cheaper NAS releases and uh, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'll keep it, why not, you know? And anyway, uh, moving on, we have uh, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. Yes, uh, another Nintendo uh, release. This one is indeed published by Nintendo, unlike the last one. It's very cute, it's very uh, Nintendo-like, it's definitely one of the most nintendo -esque. Nintendo games released in a while. Uh, it's obviously based off the Super Mario uh, 3D World uh, levels, which I don't have Super Mario 3D World. I want it, but I don't have it yet. Spoilers. I even bought the DLC. I know, crazy, right? Uh, me buying DLC. The game itself is, was actually not that expensive. Uh, believe it or not, most of the Nintendo related products I did not pay that much for. I usually got them on, on sale. The only one I didn't is my first Nintendo Switch game, that being uh, Breath of the Wild. But I, I think that's worth the money I paid for it, truth be told. Because that game is a freaking masterpiece. Uh, sorry to spoil that one. I, I feel like it would have been better to play on the Wii U, but who knows. Maybe on, maybe even on the 3DS, I have no idea. But overall, uh, not bad. It's carry on.
one. I hate that song. I don't even know why I sang it. Carry On. I mentioned it earlier on this video. Carry On is, uh, this one has, uh, speaking of manual squad, this one has a beefy manual. One of the beefiest in my entire collection. This one is a Devolver published game, which I guess makes it limited, but not really though. It's, it's just like a, you know, a physical release by Devolver. But yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty good. I mean, I haven't beaten it yet. I know it's a short game, so criminal, right? I haven't beaten it. It's, it's, it's pretty brutal, and I do like the gameplay loop. Thankfully, I've heard it doesn't get too long, so it doesn't get tiring, but I can see why people would say it, it wouldn't make a great long game and more of a short game, but based on what I've heard, they've also teased sort towards a, a sequel, so who knows? Uh, yeah, um, I look forward to playing it more. Uh, I love the art style. The art style is fantastic, and I also love the dingy, grungy atmosphere. is really nice, and overall, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, it was a solid release. I got it at my local, uh, local CD store, which is also a game store, which is also a, a vinyl and DVD and all that stuff. Uh, I bought that there and I got it for a decent price. I got a brand new seal. This one is an interesting release because uh, this one was a Russian uh, release of Damon X Machina. It came with the CD that I included in my first CD video. So yeah, that, that's that's the backstory of that, which if you saw my first CD video, which I will link somewhere above here, uh, that'll, that'll explain where exactly the CD came from and where exactly the, the game came from and why it took so long and, you know, the ongoing war between Russia and uh, Ukraine and all that stuff. And I already said my, my piece on that. So if you want to watch that, go ahead. But yeah, the game itself is, uh, is good, but not a amazing i was expecting a bit better marvelous is are kind of jerks when it comes to like what gameplay and what music and whatnot you can post so i'm not exactly for that and i think the fact that they charge so much money for the cosmetics is quite the uh insult to me i think honestly i mean if you're buying a physical it, it should come with all that stuff anyway i mean the game's already like what like 60 dollars. i mean jesus and the pc version isn't much better either and uh graphically it's kind of eh, whatever but you know i mean the gameplay wise it makes up for it but yeah because anyway so many people skip this one although really this is just a, a european release disguised as a russian release and the way you can tell i don't know if you can see this because it's kind of hard no you can see it you can see it um, there's a little bitty like triangle here and that indicates that's a Euro European release because Peggy releases have like little color indicators to indicate what the rating of the game is, which in this case it would be Peggy uh, 12. In this next set, first up we have Darksiders Genesis. You know, for some reason in my head I thought this had a ridiculous spelling like Genesis spelled with a Y or something or maybe Darksiders was spelled different, but it isn't. Uh, this is a THQ Nordic game, it's like a Diablo clone, but uh, with Darksiders, which is the, the eternal uh, aping off series where they always ape off something else. Uh, yeah, uh, Darksiders Genesis. I already own this on Steam. I also own it on Switch because it was cheap. Haven't played too much of it. Played about the same as I played on PC. Haven't been that far into it. It's fun for what it is, but it's your typical THQ Nordic game where it's definitely more of a double A game as opposed to a triple A and not exactly as charming as the indies. But it runs pretty well on Switch. I mean, there's no real performance issues or anything like that. I, I, overall, I would say there's not much really to it. Uh, I, I don't really follow the Darksiders plot, so I don't really know what goes on in those games, but people like it, I know, and some people don't. Depends on game to game, really. Anywho, next up we have Death Smiles 1 and 2 Collection for the Nintendo Switch, but this time in Asia, more specifically, Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, you know, stuff like that. Uh, this one's interesting because let me let me show you a little bitty thing here. You notice this right here? It has little uh, it has little flaps. All Asian releases of uh, Switch games have these little extra little flaps on the end. I thought that was interesting to note. Uh, this one, as you can tell, let me show you. Yep, it's definitely Asian. And if you look inside, it's got a little pretty cover of uh, very young girls. Going back to those bastards, Strictly Limited, they were selling it on their website for an exorbitant cost. If you went on Play Asia and you got the Asian copy, uh, it was significantly cheaper. Uh, than just buying it from their website and plus you wouldn't have to wait as long either even though you know they were already in stock but like I mean it just took less time because PlayAsia actually has good shipping times despite being based out of Hong Kong it's a shoot 'em up more accurately it's a cute em up it's a horizontal cute em up uh, with a bit of like gothic horror it's made by uh, City Connection and Cave Cave is the word I'm looking for Cave are classic shoot 'em up developers they're one of my favorites besides like obviously Treasure and uh, you know a few others that I 
uh, and forgetting the name of it off the top of my head. But yeah, I really like cave shooters and Death Smiles happens to be one of the ones you can get physically. There's other ones too, but like the Mura he, Mura Sama Hime Sama or whatever the frick it's called, I don't remember. I'll put it up on screen somewhere, the actual name and box art. But that game is limited run and, and as you I've, as I've already established, I'm not getting limited run. I don't think it has an Asian release. If it does, I just haven't bought it yet. Maybe I will, who knows. And plus I already own that on Steam and uh, that Steam release is a lot better than the Steam release for Death Smiles. Uh, off subject aside, now the game itself is actually very, uh, very well playing when it comes to my uh, arcade stick, which let me pop it out right now so I can show you how I play Death Smiles 1 and 2. With one of these bad boys, and I hook up the wire to this little controller right here, I'm able to play uh, shoot 'em ups. Hear that? That's uh, clicky, it's a square uh, stick. Hear that? That's buttons, and that's how I freaking play the game. And it's wonderful when you play it like that, and the button layout is natural to this actual controller, despite the fact it's a PS3, PS4 controller, made by Mad Cats. Actually, a good product made by Mad Cats. But I'm not here to review a controller, I'm here to review a game. And the game itself, like I said before, is a great shooter short, comes with a lot of different variations of the same game, so it's very replayable, and uh, it, it's there's a bit of a language gap, and there's some like ridiculous, there's like this ridiculous like 30 to $40 DLC for like some anime characters that don't come with the package that you pay for physically which I think is ridiculous and they don't really add very much they're just like playable characters that like pretty much play almost identically to all the others I don't know why exactly they felt like adding them but then taking them back and like charging ridiculous prices for them I mean come on overall City Connection actually did a good job porting this to switch now I've heard that, like I said before I've heard the PC port is something that lacks nuance and customizability and there's frame rate issues but I've experienced none of those things on switch it's 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 perfect for what it is on Switch, and I know you can play it on Xbox 360, but that copy is pretty expensive. And uh, and unless you own an arcade machine, this is pretty much the best way to play it. But I would say probably either get it from PlayAsia, I think it's a decent price, or just buy it uh, digitally and do not buy the DLC. They're trying to scam you, people. They're trying to scam you. Next up is Digimon Cyber Sleuth, and this is another game that I own on Steam. It's really addictive. It's actually like too addictive. It's an RPG, like uh, like some other entries on this uh, collection video. And uh, overall, uh, the story is whatever. I do kind of like skim the story, unlike the last RPG on this list. So I do have a vague recollection of what the actual plot is. I won't go into it because God knows this video is going to be hella long. Anyway, uh, yeah, so Digimon Cyber Sleuth, uh, I have one interesting tidbit about this game. Uh, when I went to GameStop, an undisclosed GameStop, I'm not gonna like dox myself or them for that matter. Uh, yeah, so I went to this GameStop and I had just enough money to buy it. So I went to buy it and it came in this case on the display. The guy took that case, like put it somewhere else and gave me a replacement case. And I didn't notice till I popped out and I'm like, this is not the case I bought. So I went in and just said like, hey dude. And I was kind of peeved off. I was like, hey dude, give me the freaking case. And he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, you know you know what you did. I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't do it that rude, but it wasn't exactly nice either. And eventually he gave me the right case after uh, some pushing to do it. But yeah, the game itself, uh, not much to talk about. Uh, it has a very addictive sort of uh, leveling up system and combining system. And if you've ever played any Digimon games or if you've ever uh, watched any of the anime, you you know how it goes. By the way, the whole title of the game is uh, Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth Complete Edition. I did not say that in the beginning, but if you want to look it up, that's what it's called. Uh, do I recommend getting it on Steam or Switch? Uh, either or. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's jump ball in my opinion. I think you can go with one or the other and there's nothing wrong with it. Next up is Dog World. Believe it or not, this is yet another limited type company that I've yet to talk about. It's super rare. The reason why I haven't really talked about them yet is because one, it hasn't come up, and two, even if it did come up, I wouldn't have much to say because this is the only limited company that I've used more than once that I actually have decent experience with. I mean, I've not experienced any issues with them. I've not had any weird shipping errors and then lack of communication. I've not had ridiculous prices and long wait time. It's a good company. Uh, the only thing I will say that I don't like about super rare is that they, uh, they have like this only physical kind of thing they do every once in a while where they release games physically only on switch and then they release them on itch.io later on but i don't know that kind of rubs me the wrong way anyway uh basically with dog world 
It's kind of like Cave Story. Actually, it looks a lot like Cave Story. Mixed with like Undertale visually, but it's definitely more inspired by Cave Story or Caro Blaster or whatever. Uh, and you basically go into a town of dogs, similar to how in Cave Story you go into a town of Amigas, and uh, you uh, save the world or whatever. Uh, there's really not much else to say except for there's one thing, except for there's one thing I will say that I haven't said before, uh, and that is that the aliasing on the portable uh, version, the one that you play portably, is very noticeable and it doesn't exactly scale properly even though it's a pixel game. You think they get that right uh, and it hasn't been patched at all so who knows if they'll ever fix that. Next up is another evil limited run game. Ooga booga booga. It's Dusk, yes. This one is the one I mentioned that let me show it to you right away. Look at that freaking manual right here. It is literally just this. This is the manual that's included. Are you freaking kidding me? I waited over a year just for this? Just for this? Jesus friggity miggity Christ. That stuff is embarrassing, man. Freaking embarrassing. Uh, the game itself is actually pretty freaking nice. It's pretty freaking nice, dude. It's actually really good. The version improvements that they added for the Switch release make it quite the great purchase despite there not being mouse and keyboard support. So yes, I would say absolutely purchase Dusk for Switch, but do not buy it from Limited Run, those greedy bastards them. I'm not ordering from them ever again. Ever again, I tell you, ever again. It is a quote unquote boomer shooter. Yes, a boomer shooter. And a boomer shooter is basically just a uh, FPS, but in the old style of the 90s and early 2000s. This is definitely inspired by something like Blood or, uh, or uh, Shadow Warrior. Definitely those two games. Purchase it in some capacity. Maybe PC, maybe uh, Switch, maybe PS4, or whatever. Just buy it, dude. Next up is an actual, like, limited-based company, but not really, because they also sell out of Amazon and uh, Best Buy. But I guess so does Limited Run. You know, those greedy bastards. Etherborn. This one's the most boring out of any limited release, because guess what? There's nothing inside. Nothing. Freaking, that is so pathetic for a limited release. Nothing, just a pure white canvas on the inside? Are you kidding me? The game itself is a uh, beautifully graphics-wise puzzle game where you uh, switch dimensions and go up and down, you know, uh, a Sherian sort of uh, landscapes and whatnot. Uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, worth the money I paid for it. How much did I pay for it? I don't know. I bought it at Best Buy. This one has sort of an interesting story attached to it in the sense that I went to Best Buy to buy it and then I went to the mall uh, near the Best Buy and uh, I got lost in the parking lot for like an hour and I ended up having to get somebody from security to drive me to my car because I was a dumbass and didn't know where I parked. So that's the little story I have to give about that. Next up is the second NIS game in my collection. It is Fallen Legion Revenants Vanguard Edition. And believe it or not, this one actually is not disappointing. It comes with a beefy ass manual, as expected. Look at how beefy this thing is. So beefy. On the back, it comes with a code. I'm not gonna show you it, otherwise you would actually be able to use it. Let me show you the back of it. Here you go, here's the back of it. You can't see the front of it or else you would have access to these wonderful music files. And then there's a technical support thingy, so. Yeah, it actually came with the soundtrack, it came with the manual, and it came with a little thingy on the back. Let me show you the thingy on the back, see? A little big poster that you could hang up if you wanted to, although why would you? Uh, yes, um, this is actually a sequel to a game that I've never played. I don't even know if it is on the Switch, but um, I don't know anything about the story. I barely played it. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's a turn-based sort of uh, RPG, but more of a uh, linear-based one with uh, like on on-rails movement. The graphics are very nice. Uh, I would say 
I wish I played more of this before I did this video, but you know, I have so many games to go through and don't have time to talk about all of them in great detail. But uh, this one was actually pretty decently priced uh, for a uh, NIS game, I think because nobody really wanted it. It's not exactly the most desirable game, but I like it, so uh, there's that. I have no idea if you can pick it up still because the problem with NIS releases, they tend to uh, go out of stock relatively quick and they tend not to restock them, hence why once console generations are over, NIS games tend to be the most collectible you know that's that's how it goes with stuff like the PSP or what have you you know so uh, there's that next up is Fire Emblem Warriors yes it's a Musou game I believe I own a few Musou games but I think this is the only one I own physically it's a Fire Emblem game I couldn't care less about the Fire Emblem characters the lore the plot whatever I just like Musou games and this one as a Musou game is good it's not the best Musou I've ever played but it's pretty solid dude pretty solid I bought did I buy the DLC or did it come with free DLC I don't exactly remember I might have done both I have no idea um yeah I'm not much into cosmetics so if there was I didn't really buy them probably uh yeah I mean it has amiibo support so I use amiibos to like get little weapons and stuff I like the weapon crafting I like I like the recruiting of characters and leveling up I like the RPG light systems in the game uh yeah it's not exactly the hardest game it's it's, it's it's not easy either you, you can definitely lose in the game uh but overall um not much to say about it other than that i know there's not a lot to say about some games in some games there's a heck of a lot to say about it so trust me strap in it's not gonna get any better next up is hades yes indeed hades now i'm gonna be real with y'all Y'all, I know, right? Because I'm a southerner. Uh, Hades, uh, this version of Hades, is not the original cover, and it does not include a manual. Although, the original did include a manual, which I found out recently, which kind of irritates me, because I thought I had a complete copy otherwise, but I do not. Dang, that stinks. Anyway, but yeah, I have a uh, illegitimate case for a legitimate copy of Hades. Hades is a uh, addictive uh, and very much the best game to come out of super giant um it's definitely worth the initial playthrough i don't really know if it's worth the extra playthroughs to get the extra story i don't really care about the story sorry i don't really care about this sort of greek fan fiction that they're writing but whatever what are you gonna do about it anyway uh yeah uh the cool thing is it, it has uh, cross compatibility save wise with your pc copy and your switch copy you can like transfer your save back and forth and at one point i had steam family share and so i was able to uh switch uh saves over back and forth and play on the on the uh, Steam family share with my with my older brother. He had the game, I didn't. But I could only play it when he wasn't playing games. He was playing games pretty frequently. It was the summer, so you know how it goes. He's a teacher. This cover, believe it or not, was made before the game actually had a physical, which is why it doesn't exactly look very official, says Nintendo eShop. I want to make sure that if I did get a cover, that it, it would be clear that I was buying a reproduction. So just so people knew if I sold it that I wasn't selling them snake oil. So there's that. It, it was a hot, trendy thing for a little bit to play Hades. I kind of jumped on a little bit late, but uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It should have won Game of the Year, in my opinion, at the Game Awards. So uh, there is that. Don't even get me started on the Game Awards, though. I mean, come on. Call of Duty Mobile over Sayonara Wild Hearts for best mobile game? Blech. Uh, this one is Haven. It's another limited run release. <laughs> This one took a decent little while. This is probably the shortest wait I had for a game. Uh, funny thing is, uh, I spilled uh, Coca-Cola Starlight flavor all over the game. <laughs> it probably has a few stains other places. I mean, it is water damage after all. Uh, yeah, um, that kind of sucks, dude, truth be told. But the game is very glitchy. I'm surprised by how glitchy it was and how massive the patch was. That's another thing that's crazy. Limited Run claims to have like the, the complete copy before release. There's like a massive multi gigabyte patch for the switch release. What the frick dude? And it's not even feature complete And it's not even stable like what the frick and uh, you can tell that the 
but the addition of like the two gay characters whether you be girl and girl or boy and boy the counterparts that originally weren't that gender definitely uh were add-ons like post pandemic like one guy uh me and my friend ended up finding out that that this person had a french uh accent uh the guy equivalent to what the girl would normally be and uh yeah it was kind of weird because like he uh yeah he, he had like a like a steve suppressing a french accent and he sounded weird and the girl had like a very compressed audio that sounded way different than everyone else's recordings which were quite clearly in the studio so i thought that was interesting like how unprofessional it seemed and uh the story's really engaging though i, I think it's really mature and very laid out and there's and all of it is very great dialogue uh, it's, i'm actually very engaged with the plot i think it's very immersive and i like the way it's approached and i think you know i think the two uh females in my case the two girls in this relationship uh throughout the game are it's a very wholesome relationship i like the relationship the controls are super weird to this day i keep whenever i play it i keep going back and forth back and forth because the way that like the analog sticks work when you control it it's hard to explain but uh yeah i mean it's a great game but i wouldn't exactly recommend uh purchasing it from limited run or even on switch in general buy the pc port that's probably a way more stable and way better release truth be told so avoid the switch port entirely in my opinion lesson learned another h it's uh helmut the badass from hell this is also a reproduction uh, co uh what's it called not copy uh uh uh, slip, slip in. Uh, it, just so you know, both of those uh, games that I, I showed, Hades and Helmet, which have replacement uh, cases and uh, and uh, slip ins. The cases are legitimate Nintendo Switch cases. I, I did not get reproduction cases. I only got reproduction slips. Uh, but yeah, uh, Helmut is interesting because uh, one, it's it's your run-of-the-mill, uh, running gun sort of indie sort of uh, like over-the-shoulder thing like Smash TV. But it had like a code that you could use from a convention that you could like plug in and uh, play like a like a like a cheat or whatever. But they never end up doing any more codes. This game has never been updated, so it's one of the few Switch uh, physical down which I can play base for the entirety of its lifespan i guess the developers abandoned it after the pandemic because it was developed shortly before the pandemic especially the switch port and uh it was originally a gamestop uh, exclusive release physically i don't know if it still is but i thought that was interesting uh, i picked it up at a, at a local uh game store a different game store than the one i've been talking about before there's two within the area that are uh, mom and pop uh and and that store also also sells uh dvds and whatnot as well but they're mostly just dvd blu-ray and a uh, video game as opposed to the other store being just a general collectibles store oh yeah and, the, and uh, the other the the store that i bought this from sells a lot of funko pops like way too many funko pops like jesus like i think they had to like unload inventory and just like donate them due to how freaking much they had it was insane next up is kaze and the wild masks that's the word this is a platformer in the style of crash bandicoot but 2d it also kind of reminds me of jazz the jackrabbit you know they're both rabbits and they both play kind of like sonic which leads me to my next comparison sonic yeah this uh this has a little bit of damage here i don't know i don't exactly remember where that came from but it's there i don't know why but yeah it's got some damage i haven't gotten very far in this game <laughs> starting to notice a trend now aren't you it's a solid platformer it's probably one of my favorite on the switch considering i don't really own very many 2d platformers that's not really saying much though truth be told well i own another one but i would say this one is better i mean i know it's once you figure out what it is it might be controversial i know the pixel art is very beautiful it's very detailed not so detailed that it takes freaking forever to make but detailed enough where i'm impressed uh, I like the fact that you can go back and collect things to completion in a uh, retry friendly way. And I also like the fact that I can correct people and say it's called Kaze, not K's. You know, uh, maybe I'm wrong though. Maybe it is K's. Maybe I look like a fool. I'm not going to put a graphic on screen, by the way. You're just going to have to look it up for yourself. 
and also because I'm lazy. Speaking of lazy, it's our good old pink puffball Kirby. I have not played enough of this game. It's a shame. I really should play more of the game considering I freaking pre-ordered it. You know, it's a great game, but why have I not played it more? And also, I didn't dodge once, even though I know it's a core mechanic of the game. It's crazy, I know, right? Uh, but yeah, um, I'm surprised at how good this is. I mean, I guess I shouldn't be considering, you know, it's basically just Kirby, but in 3D. But even despite the limited amount of uh, copy abilities, the length, and the difficulty and all that stuff. I mean, truth be told, it's freaking great. Now keep in mind, this is the Kirby Defender who says every game is at the very least good, but I'm gonna modify it and say every game is at the very least mediocre because I've played some games from the Kirby series that aren't exactly the best. I mean, Squeak Squad rings a bell, right? I mean, I know. But yeah, um, I don't really own very many Kirby games anymore. I sold most of mine on the Game Boy, on the DS, you know, on the 3DS. Actually, I didn't sell that one. I lost the one on 3DS, or more accurately, one of my younger brothers lost. Uh, the one on 3DS. So I had no choice but to get rid of the case. Tragedy, I know. Uh, but yeah, this is my first real uh, return to Kirby when it comes to owning it and playing it. Uh, but I played a lot of games throughout the series. I liked Mass Attack quite a bit. I kind of regret selling that one. Next up, I gotta be quiet because uh, my family's sleeping. So uh, I guess this is time for the asthma segment. Uh, first up is a uh, labyrinth of refrain cover of dusk. This is yet another long titled uh, NIS release. I'm going even quieter right now. Uh, yeah, uh, this NIS release is uh, a dungeon crawler. It does have the alternate cover, but no manual this time, so kind of disappointing. This one I think was a bit harder to come by, but it might be available now, I have no idea. You can name characters whatever you want. But the customizability for each character is pretty limited and what you can uh, choose for them to be looks wise and uh, attribute wise. It's a pretty rudimentary dungeon layout and honestly I'm kind of stuck in the game right now and the story is blasé so I think I'm going to leave it at that. Next up is the game that's seen its better days. It's a game I played the crap out of. It's a game I've also featured plenty of clips of on this channel, which I'm sure, you know, will be in the end card somewhere. It's Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild is like one of my favorite games on the Switch, period. I literally learned the speedrun techniques, or at least some of them, and I wish to learn more because I am that in love with this game. Uh, the story is probably the weakest part, but other than that, the game is freaking fantastic. I bought the DLC, I got all the amiibos, albeit through bootleg. Like, I, I collected the hell out of everything in this game. I spent hundreds of hours on this game. Uh, the copy itself, uh, I literally bought it when I first got my Switch. It's the first game I ever owned for Switch, and it's seen its uh, fair share of usage, as you can tell by the creases in the plastic. So indeed, it is very much a very near and dear game to my heart. To a lesser degree, I don't know if I've beaten this game. I've gotten very far in it, and I enjoy it just as much, uh, but not more than Breath of the Wild. It's not as long of a game to get through. It's The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. Uh, this is the remaster, or I guess in this case, remake. I never played the Game Boy or Game Boy Color versions of the game. This was my first experience with the game, and I gotta say, it's certainly quite different from a lot of the other Zeldas that have existed before and since, but I like it because of it, and I think it's a pretty solid experience. I didn't really have a lot of the same performance issues that everyone was talking about. I thought it ran great. I really enjoyed the graphics. I really enjoyed uh, the gameplay. The story is adorable, honestly. I might just play it again once I beat it. It's that freaking good. Uh, next up is a Japanese uh, Switch copy. Have we encountered this yet? 
I don't know. It's Manifold Garden. Uh, let me show you something interesting about this. Um, yeah, they put the Sierra ratings, which this one is A, uh, on the spine, which I thought was interesting. It's kind of an eyesore, though. I don't like it. Uh, another interesting thing about this case before we get started talking about the game, it has a really interesting backing, but why does it say self-defense right here? What? What does that have to do with anything? That's so weird. Yeah, um, this game is actually another another game that was originally something that I could have bought from the same publisher who published uh, the uh, Etherborn game, the I Am 8-Bit People, and I could have gotten it, and I probably could have gotten it for cheaper, but uh, I decided to go with the Japanese copy. Why? I don't know. I just felt like uh, buying something more reliable. You know, it came from PlayAsia, as always. Not sponsored by PlayAsia, by the way. I just happen to like their website. The game game is a puzzler in the style of a mind-bending, you know, dimension-shifting puzzler. Kind of like Anti-Chamber, if you've ever played that game. Speaking of that, when's that coming to Switch? That needs to come to Switch. But yeah, it's kind of like that, except for it's got like more of a gravity, like going up walls, kind of a Sharian. Kind of like Etherborn, also a Sharian. But this one's especially like MC Asher. Uh, I kind of got stuck in this game and I got frustrated and I stopped playing it. I was also very tired when I played it, but I'm sure eventually, let me get closer to the mic. I'm sure eventually it'll, I'll come back to it and I'll play some more of it and I'll enjoy it but uh yeah it's it's published by playism which i i tend to like playism releases it, it looks great on switch there's not a whole lot of actual difference between this release and the pc release it's a very minimalistic game graphics wise and on top of that there's, there's the options are pretty nice you know there's some like cool little uh, accessibility features that i really like pretty nice in between filming these sessions, uh, I found out that I could up the resolution of uh, my webcam to 1280 by 960. Uh, 4x3. So I'm actually in 964 x3 with a, a background right about here. Uh, so yeah, notice some more crispy uh, details that you didn't previously see. I know, right? Crazy? I mean, does that invalidate the whole video? I don't think so. I think we're just gonna keep on going with the flow. And next up is uh, Mega Man 11 in crispy detail. Ooh. Yes, Mega Man 11. This is one I got at a game store. Um, it's a Mega Man game. It's actually a good Mega Man game. You know, it's it's a modern style. Uh, you know, 3D, 2.5D to be more specific, sort of a run and gun. You know what Mega Man is, jump and shoot, right? That's the classic, classic format that it pretty much, you know, uh, revolutionized. So, uh, yeah, I mean, what can I say about Mega Man that hasn't already been said? How, what can I say about saying the phrase, what can I say about blank that hasn't already been said? What can I say about that? What I will say about it is that uh, I'm a little babby. I tried playing in the harder difficulties and got my ass whooped, so I had to lower the difficulty like a baby. Word of advice, don't play unless you're a true gamer, which I am not. And uh, it looks great on Switch. There's only a few games I would say that I own that don't look good on Switch. I mean, typically I don't buy things that run and look like doo-doo on Switch. And it's not annoying, like some of the previous Mega Man games would go like, boop, Mega Man! Classic eager after meme, before it became a po 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 pussy Yeah, I'm, I'm calling out eager after <laughs> Where was I going with this? Next up is Metal Unit by a company called NeoWiz. If you look at it very closely, it looks like a butthole. Like a, like a dog's butthole. Just puckered and ready to poop. <laughs> That's disgusting. Okay, um, yeah, it's, it's by Super Rare again. And uh, this one, I also don't have any problems with at all. Yeah, it certainly is a, uh, a game, all right. I don't know how to describe the genre. It's kind of like a Metroidvania, but it's got more emphasis on combat. It's, it's linear, it's stage-based, it's sort of a mech 2D platformer. I mean, kind of similar to some other games I've played. Can't exactly name them but you can buy it on Steam. With most Switch releases, you can buy it on Steam. Unless they got Nintendo as the publisher. Or 
are contained Nintendo properties. So uh, yeah, uh, Super Rare did a good job on this one. I mean, like I said before, they shut things out relatively quickly. Uh, and uh, I didn't play much of it. I'm not exactly the most into it, but I feel like eventually it's gonna be one of those games where I just pop it in one day and be like, I wanna play like a, like two or three levels of this. And then I, like in like 10 years, I beat the game or something. I have no idea. Or maybe I sell it by then. I bought it cause Cute Girl was on the cover. You can see the uh, cute girl right here. Okay, we're back again. It's uh, Monster Jam Steel Titans 2. I own it on PC and Switch. Yep, it's another THQ Nordic game, and it's a monster truck game. And you may be thinking, Matt, you're not a little boy. You're right, I'm not a little boy. I'm a man. And as a man, I like Tony Hawk's. And guess what's like Tony Hawk's, but with monster trucks, this game. Yep, no story whatsoever, so thank God I don't gotta worry about that. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, playing, playing monster truck games like, you know, like going around and racing and, and like doing flips and tricks and stuff. Basically what you would do in a Tony Hawk's game, but minus the racing part, but um, yeah. So basically you do little mini games and it's fun. And uh, yes, it graphically is one of the games that I mentioned earlier that does kind of look like doo-doo, but do I care? Not really, because it looks doo-doo on PC too, so there you go. But it runs all right, but it does look like doo-doo, so. It's RPG time. It's Neo, the world ends with you. That's what it's called. And uh, I didn't play the first game and I don't own a DS. Well, actually, I do own a 3DS. But yeah, it's pretty much the only acceptable way to play is if you own a DS. I own a DS Lite, but copies are not worth paying for, even if they're expensive or not. It doesn't matter. I guess I could emulate it, you know, but that would be illegal, which is why I don't do it. But I, in general, I, I just, I'm just interested in playing the sequel as a stand, standalone story. Uh, and as a standalone story, it's cool. Uh, I'm not exactly paying the best attention to it right now. I'm trying my best, but ADHD does its wonders on me and makes me skip all the cutscenes. Yeah, in general, it's f it's uh, it's engaging. The music is very repetitive and kind of earwormy, but also annoying at the same time, if that makes any sense. But it's sort of meme-worthy almost, how uh, it's sort of weird and off-tune it is. Uh, yeah, um, and it's really compressed too, which I think is really weird, given, you know, it's like a AAA game published by Square Enix but Square Enix publishing things in general don't really seem to make very much sense do they like the kind of things they've done as of recent I mean so uh yeah um Tetsuya Nomura uh, kept his grubby hands off the story so it actually doesn't suck and uh he took a minimal like a producing slash design role which is what he should have done to begin with for Kingdom Hearts but need I say more regarding that it's me what against the world how could i have forgotten about manual squad look there's a manual here with girls and a bald dude right here how could i have forgotten that it's my favorite game series time i would have said that before the disaster that was known as 3 happened. I probably would have said it even after Travis Strikes Again came out. Yeah, that's right, we're talking about the OG. No more heroes, it's kill or be killed. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I went in the reverse order of what I should have. I beat the second game and then, I, and then I'm playing through the first game. Still haven't beaten it, I know, criminal, right? Uh, this game, I thought I would go into it not liking it as much as I, as I would, which I know sounds crazy because I love, love, love the story of this game, but uh, I thought the gameplay would have not been able to match it, but I, I think it's all right. I think the gameplay is pretty good. Graphically, it looks better than the freaking the supposed third game of the trilogy. Like, really? Yeah, I mean, like, I, I just bought No More Heroes 3 and then I just chucked it the moment I got bored of it. I just sold it. Bye-bye. Don't need you. Enough about No More Heroes 3. No More Heroes the original by limited run. Hopefully, I think... I think this, this will be the last limited run release, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think we'll have to deal with their greedy asses anymore. Until the last one of my shipment arrives, or whatever. Actually, there is one more, but it's it's the sequel to the series. I'll, I'll say it right now, it's No More Heroes 2, I'm just gonna spoil it. Let me show you the beefy, beefy manual right here. Uh, this is actually the Best Buy alternative cover, because I just happened to see it at Best Buy and I bought it. 
which is realistically what I should have done for some of the, some of the games I bought in limited run. I should just wait for them to go on Amazon or whatever. Look, it's the game that's within the game. Look at that. But yeah, inside is a map of Santa Destroy, which I think looks like the Indianapolis flag, which is interesting. I mean, yeah, I love the music by Masafumi Takeda. I use his stuff all the time in videos. You might not even notice. But on top of that, I, I love I love listening to it casually. Uh, the gameplay is pretty good. I mean, if you played one, you played them all except for Travis Strikes again. We don't talk about that. Paradise. This is no paradise. I'm just going to geek out about it, I guess, because I am a No More Heroes fan until they fucking ruined it. I mean, come on. Why is freaking Sylvia not French sounding? And why is Henry, Sir Henry, mother fucker, not Irish? And why is he like an incel fucking, like, I don't even know what the, he's like some fucking Zodiac motherfucker in the trilogy, or the third game, and then the fucking big booby sword, like sword ladies, a tree, and ah, oh, she gives me a fucking migraine every time I think about it. Mm, I fucking hate No Man's 3. So bad. Gotta move on, because clearly, <laughs> I'm pissed off about something else. Uh, this this next one, yes, is indeed No More Heroes 2. I think this one gets overhated. I don't think it's that bad. I like the fact that they streamlined it to the point where you just go to the mini games, you don't have to deal with the overworld, because honestly, the overworld is usually the worst part of the No More Heroes series. Uh, it's charming the first game, but I, I would have hated to do it in the second game. Uh, the bosses are way better. The gameplay is tighter. Uh, I like... Um, I like the designs of a lot of the bosses. I I, I don't think Jasper Bat Jr. is that even that, even that bad as a boss. I get he's an annoying little twat of a character that sucks, but at the same time, uh, yeah, uh, it's not that bad fight wise. If I played on mild, maybe it would have been harder. Maybe would have hated it. God forbid if I played on spicy. All I know is uh, I like this game. I like the the mini game where you make Gene not fat. I don't know why the fuck Gene is a guy in, in this trilogy. I don't get why the why the fuck does he talk? Why the fuck are there aliens? So many stupid fucking questions I, I, I have to ask. Why why are they doing the whole like like plot twist thing a million fucking times in the game? It, it was it was a joke. It was a meta joke in this game. It's just a fucking farce in the third game. I mean, like the character models look ugly. It looks like it looks like uh, like a budget version of Killer is Dead, and I like that game, but I don't want it on Switch, and I don't want it at a budget price, at least in terms of looks. Even speaking of that, that's a Suda 51 sound effect. Anyway, sound effect from Killer Seven. I'd rather it look like Killer Seven than Killer is Dead, budget wise. This sucks. This game's awesome. Fuck No More Heroes Three. I'm done. Hello, it's me, Guru Larry, and I welcome you to Fact Hunt. Five times, I sucked my own dick in the park. Number 12, it was a really good time. Number 11, I'm on to the next part of the video. Which is the Japanese hour. Yes, it's Weave Hour, everybody. But we have two different Japanese games in a row. And first up, by Tokyo Game Factory, published again by Square Enix. It's Oninaki. Yes, it's a physical from Japan. Japan. Have we encountered that? Yes, we have. Have we encountered it with uh, Japanese language on the on the side? No, we have not. Yes, Oninaki is a action RPG from Tokyo Game Factory, the people who made Bravely uh, Default and Bravely Second. Um, this physical was uh, was released in America, but is very rare and is way cheaper to get the Japanese version, which also comes in English anyway. Yes, some Japanese games actually do come in English, including that last game, Manifold Garden, that I was talking about. That also came in English. Yes, and I bought this uh, on eBay. Yes, on eBay, not on, from PlayAsia. I know I keep mentioning them but uh, yes this one was an ebay purchase from a very nice seller from japan who gave me a very reasonable price shipped it relatively quick and i have great things to say about him regardless of the price whatever it was he was great anyway he was like one of the few guys who actually tried to respond to me and in english too which was a very valiant effort by him considering the language barrier yeah this game itself is actually not that special i mean story wise i've heard it's not very good not very interested in the story anyway uh action rpg wise is an interesting concept where you jump between worlds sort of like an angel demon thing uh it's not a unique concept but it's certainly one i haven't seen done in this exact way um i'm i'm actually curious to play bravely default too i kind of want to i i, I 
I own a 3DS, but it's in battered shape. Otherwise, I'd play Bravely Default and Bravely Second. But yeah, um, this game is actually not that bad. This is not, not that good either. I mean, honestly, if I were ever to sell any games, I might sell this one. But I don't feel like it, because right now, it's it's uh, it's in my collection, and it's staying that way. Let me show you, not a manual. Uh, there's, there's a code, can't use it, doesn't work, it expired. But here's the nice little alternate cover on the back that I think is really interesting. Speaking of games of which that I might sell at some point in time, due to, in this case, actually beating it and getting all the endings and whatnot, it's uh, Oshirabu Husbandos versus Wife, whatever the title is, I'll put it on screen. This is a is something I pre-ordered from, guess what, it came back, Play Asia. I waited months for this to come out, when it did, I played it, I beat it, I enjoyed it. It's a Yuri, yes, it's actually one of two Yuris I have in my collection. But yes, it's a uh, it's a visual novel where, where you have choices to decide whether or not to get with a woman who uh, mistakenly thinks you've proposed to her, when in reality she was proposing to her husband. And I will keep the details sparse because I want you to play and enjoy it by yourself. The accessibility options and in general just the options on this version is, are fantastic. It certainly is premium in that sense. Um, I ordered it from PlayAsia which didn't have a pre-order bonus. But believe it or not, ha had I ordered it from like Amazon or like... I, I looked up the website and like they actually came with like posters and like and like uh, like wall scrolls and all, all, these, all these various things like postcards and whatnot like for the Japanese pre-order release, but I guess PlayAsia didn't bother including any of those, which kind of sucks, but again, I don't live in Japan, so what am I supposed to do about that? So I guess that's uh, Japanese hour over. Weave hour is over. Close up shop, move on to the next part of the video. Just so you know, if I sound a bit different, uh, I don't have the Rona, I just have a general head cold. So I might cough, I'll try to edit it out, but probably by the time this gets done, I'll, I'll be better and I'll be still recording. So next up is Owlboy. The interesting thing about all boys I bought it three times two I think I bought intentionally and one I bought on accident one I was trying to order for me when I was trying to order for my older brother and then I for some reason eBay cut off communication between me and a seller and we were trying to tell each other because I accidentally shipped it to the wrong address because my, my older brother moved houses I was trying to ship it to his new apartment eventually you know he got, he got the message but I was trying to get a refund because he wasn't responding to me but then it was a whole big mess basically I got that worked out but during the meantime i ordered another copy so i didn't give him to my brother will he hasn't played it much at all that rotten bastard him just kidding i love him yeah owlboy is a really detailed game but it's not exactly the most polished in my opinion i think one of the major problems with the game is the fact that uh that there's like certainly corners that were cut despite the fact it took like 12 years to make or something crazy like that i, I think something like uh, iconoclast is actually more uh polished than something like owlboy iconoclast took a similar amount of time but i feel like there's a definitely there, i feel like there's definitely a bigger level of polish even if the detail isn't as detailed you know if that makes any sense uh the game uh is fun it's certainly simplistic uh i mean it's definitely more focused on like the 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 sight and the the ability to be behold it as opposed to actually play it it's definitely reminiscent of something like a jrpg like you know like a tales of game or like uh or like a cold steel legends of whatever the hell or like an ease game when it comes to scope i guess it certainly got that jrpg vibe despite maybe the uh gameplay and origin of it kind of like a psp game if you will it's the kind of vibes it gives me uh yeah but you can find it for on switch for super cheap so actually i would like this is one of the few times that i would actually recommend you uh pick up the switch physical over any other version because you you'll probably get it for cheapest on switch through physical because i certainly did as opposed to buying it on steam like on sale or or buying it on uh, like the eShop on sale, whatever. I mean, like, I, I, yeah, it, it doesn't really go on sale that often, so I would say pick it up on Switch Physical. It's actually worth your while. Hey guys, as you can tell, I'm much more sick now uh, as opposed to when I first started uh, recording while sick. I probably won't be recording as much due to all the phlegm and bad stuff in my throat. But uh, I thought I'd just get this one out of the way, considering it's sitting on my desk. And uh, I, I, I was meant to record that next, but I never got around to it when my voice sounded better. But right now it's Persona 5 Strikers. I would own Persona 5 on Switch if it existed, which I think eventually it will, but it, ha it hasn't existed yet. When it will and when it comes physically, I will absolutely buy it. But for now, I, I'm content with Strikers. I get by playing Strikers and I'm spoiling the plot to the
the regular Persona 5. I don't exactly care, simply because, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I don't really care about plots being spoiled in general. I can usually go back and watch plots I already know the ending to be just fine, as long as I'm not, like, watching a whole Let's Play or whatever, which I didn't. I just played a sequel series, so, uh, or in this case, a sequel game. It is a Muso, but also kind of, like, stealth and uh more rpg focused than a lot of musos are it's certainly an atlas game you can tell uh, i like the fact that you can play with the japanese voices that's pretty cool the story is great but yeah it's nice to play with the original uh dub and not the new dub in english i i, I don't mind the dubs i just prefer to uh, listen in japanese and Look at the subtitles. Story is great. I can't wait to play the original Persona 5. I still don't want anything that plays it. Maybe I'll buy it on PC. I don't know if that, if that ever comes to fruition. I mean, you never know with Atlas. They say they'll do something, but who knows if they actually do it. I heard Persona 4 is a bit different when it comes to like sort of gameplay elements. And 5 is a lot more streamlined, but not as romance focused, which I'm okay with. It's certainly something that can hold my attention for long periods of time. A game I'm not good at though, that's for sure. All right, there's one thing I forgot about Persona 5 Strikers. It comes with a code for uh, the DLC, which is like the soundtrack and the making of and all that. But I wish it just would have come came included with the cartridge as like a separate file, like on 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 the actual thing itself. But instead, they lock you to a code so that like if you buy a used copy, you're not able to get it. Which I think it's pretty scummy. And don't worry about using the code; it's already already been used. Hey guys, what's up? I'm back after a hell of a day where I had a massive fever and uh, I could barely move. And uh, I'm feeling better now. I'm feeling good enough where I can record. Last time I saw you, we were on the P's and uh, I believe we just got through Persona Strikers. So now, up next, is actually the most recent addition to the collection. It's Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Uh, yeah, um, funny thing is, uh, I played this, I kept playing it, but the time limit kind of stresses me out, honestly, like, I was getting so stressed out trying to do everything within the time limit, it makes me so nervous, it makes me want to, like, freaking have a panic attack playing that game, it's like, I don't know if I can go back to it, you know, I, I like it, I like it, I like, I like it graphically, I like it, uh, you know, art-wise and design-wise, and I like the gameplay, but I don't know if I can go back, you know? Um, it's kind of interesting because, you know, I never played a Pikmin game, and I know this one's more forgiving than others, but, I mean, it's just not for me. I'm not gonna sell it, I'm not gonna get rid of it, because maybe I'll grow as a person enough to not get so stressed out playing it. That's ideally the goal. So, uh, I haven't played it very long because of that, so I don't have much to say about it. So we can just blow right through that one and move on to the real star of this recording session. It's Poison Control. This one does indeed have a manual manual squad hype. this comes with a manual and it comes with a code for a soundtrack which i cannot show otherwise you'd be able to use it unlike the last code i showed which you can't use uh poison control kind of reeks of a vita game i don't know if it ever came out on vita i'll put it on screen if it ever did it feels like a vita game it feels like if it wasn't originally meant for vita that uh they definitely tried to put it on the Vita before switching to Switch. Yeah, it's, it's another MAS release. Uh, it's sort of like a Splatoon-like game, but with emphasis on like shooting and kind of like Killer's Dead. I know I brought that, brought that up earlier in my infamous, uh, it's, not, it's not infamous because this video isn't even out yet, but what will be an infamous uh, rant uh, about No More Heroes 3. Uh, but yeah, it reminds me of that game. I still think it looks better than No More Heroes 3 anyway, but I'm too sick to be upset about No More Heroes again, so I'm good. Um, but yeah, this game uh, has a forgettable story, not much of a story anyway. Uh, it's just like basic ass cutscenes scenes with like a few interactable dialogue with like some sort of choice system which I don't really, really know how it's going to be implemented. One thing I don't like is there actually is like one microtransaction in the game that I don't I think is bullshit. It works like a mobile game. It's like if, if you don't if you lose lives or if you do whatever to not get farther in, the, in far enough in the game you have to wait to, to play it again or you can just buy like some bullshit microtransaction 
and you can get back to playing it. It's like, well then why did you charge money for this game? Like why didn't you just go all out and make it free to play and just do the microtransaction bullshit so I could avoid it? Thankfully the game's not that hard, really, so I don't think I'll experience a problem, but it, that, that stuff definitely irks, irks me, for sure. Uh, I prefer not to be uh, paywalled at all. This is, uh, I believe this is an in-house NIS game. They developed and published this themselves. They didn't, you know, uh, outsource it to somebody else and publish it for Switch or whatever. Like with other games in the series. I believe this was supposed to be another GameStop exclusive, although I know for a fact it is not because that's not where I picked it up. I picked it up on, I believe, Amazon or Best Buy, one of the two. But yeah, it's definitely no longer a GameStop exclusive if it was supposed to be. Unlike the Hellmoot game, which still is a GameStop exclusive, you could buy this new, although probably not now. It's been a little bit and I had a bit of a harder time finding it. Maybe you can still buy it? I have no idea. Would I say pick this up? Just depends. If you don't mind the fact that you might be paywalled at some point, and if the game looks interesting to you, I'd say pick it up. I'm back, and I sound even better. I'm not sick as much as I was two days ago, for sure. I'm pretty much over whatever I have. It's just congestion now, so let's freaking go, baby. Speaking of let's freaking go, it's Pokemon Go. Not really, it's Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. Yes, I own a Pokemon game. Pokemon, I guess is how you say it, but I own a Pokemon game. Uh, this is the only one I will own on Switch because all the other Pokemon games, Pokemon games on Switch are fucking trash. Sword and Shield, trash. The Diamond and Pearl remakes. Diamond and Pearl weren't even that really good, and the remake does barely anything, so trash. Pokemon Snap, not as good as the original. Need I say more? And don't even get me started on those digital games, because those are also doo-doo. This is the only one, I'll tell you why, because it was originally supposed to be a 3DS game, and is a remake of a game I played as a kid. It's a mystery dungeon game. I've owned games in this series before, like the original Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, but also something like Sheed and the Wanderer. I didn't own Sheed and the Wanderer, I, I pirated it. Oops, did I say that out loud? Yeah, I played that, and uh, I've also played, uh, there's another one I own for Switch. Not, sorry, not Switch, uh, PC. I'll put it up on screen, whatever it is. But yes, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. I also played one on WiiWare, by the way, but that's also pirating. If you notice, I fixed the mic so that the actual logo is on front now. I had it messed up before. Uh, enough procrastinating. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon plays just how I remembered it, but better. Uh, the graphics are nice, not amazing. You can tell it's supposed to be a 3DS game. Uh, it's also uh, a Russian release, like the previous one, although this one was not near the, not nowhere near the start of the Ukraine war, so I got lucky there, for sure. This game is freaking great. It has all the features of the original, plus the sort of like, you type in certain codes, you get certain Pokemon from even the WiiWare game that I mentioned earlier. It has a lot of the modern conveniences, it has a lot, a, a way better AI, because if you've ever played the original games on DS and GBA, the AI was terrible. It was so bad, it was actually annoying having to deal with other other, other uh, NPCs or other players that went along with you, because they sucked so bad. They would, they would constantly get into fights, and they would constantly be like making trouble where it didn't didn't belong. It was like, God, can you just you just freaking follow me? But this is not a problem in that in this game. Oh, the town is great, story is great, charm is great, music's great. Honestly, I, I could go on and on about this game, but I mean come on, this video is already like an hour long at this point. I need to move on. And moving on, this is the deal I was talking about way long ago. I told you that I, I got a game for an insane deal. This is that game. It's a platformer. And I and I think I said at one point that I had like two platformers. It's not true because I already mentioned the platformer I had earlier. And I probably Probably have some more truth be told but anyway it's uh freaking rayman legends yes i got rayman legends at uh meyer which is a midwestern slash you know wherever uh grocery store it's not really known for being like a electronics store it has a very small electronics section they had a lot of games on clearance and uh this one was the cheapest it was six dollars six dollars do you know how cheap that is especially in modern currency you, can, you can't get anything for six dollars now it's insane how cheap i got this for Nobody wanted it, and it's not like there's any extra downloads. There's like a what, like a 10 megabyte download or something for a patch? 
It's a full ass cartridge. There's nothing wrong with it. I got it brand new and it plays great. It's it's Rayman Legends. Like what do you expect? It comes with the original Rayman Origins. It's uh it's a great platformer. It's uh it's got the, it's got the Kung Foot mode that I probably will never play. And honestly, like I, I don't get why it was going for six bucks. Like who wasn't buying this? This was like the best deal I probably ever gotten on a Switch game for sure. Either that or like probably something like Sushi Strikers where the sh Sushi Do, which I'll, I'll show later. I got that for like $12. Spoilers. Uh, Rayman, I haven't played much of it because it's actually a recent addition to the collection. A few games have been recent additions, hence why I haven't, haven't had much to say about them. But I, me I remember buying Rayman Origins on Steam years ago. I loved it. I played it. Didn't beat it. I haven't beaten this game. Uh, I tend not to beat platformers. I'm kind of bad about that. I tend not to beat games in general, truth be told. There's only a handful of games I've ever beaten. So let's move on swiftly. Let's talk about the final game in this brief uh, collection in this brief recording. Rolling Gunner uh, and Overpower is what it's called, plus Overpower. Uh, this actually comes with uh, both uh, the game and the DLC included in the cartridge. Although I don't know if it's included because it did come with a sizable download. This is by Strictly Limited. Yes, uh, as you know before, I'm not using them ever again. This is the second game I got from them out of the t out of the first one, which was the first video, uh, first game I showed in this video. Yes, now we're finally to the second game I bought from Strictly Limited. This one came in no problem. This was actually the one that came in first. Despite I think I, I ordered it second. Uh, this game is a shoot 'em up. You can play either with the analog stick and play like in a sort of like twin stick shooter way or a classic arcade way where you can play with like a stick or whatever and uh it's it's a just a two 2D horizontal shooter uh, that just uh, plays like your typical shooter. I probably paid too much for this truth be told but the point is yeah um overall this is a great game but uh honestly not dissatisfied with it. Uh, does it come with a manual? Yes, indeed it does. Manual squad hype. Oh, this is not exactly a manual. It's more like a poster. I'm not going to take it out because then I have to fold it back in. But yeah, that's basically what you get. Boop, boop. It's Future Matt here. Here to tell you that during the recording and making of this video, I couldn't control myself. I bought another game. This is actually a few days later. So we're out of order alphabetically, but it's Cruise and Blast. Yes, it's the Cruisin' Game, the new one from Nintendo, as well as Raw Thrills, I guess is what they're called, I guess. It's a racing game. It's a cruising game. It's got that sort of burnout, you know, crashing other cars thing. It's got that classic arcade sort of uh, Sega Rally sort of going, going across various terrains. It's got all sorts of stuff. I mean, it's freaking cruising, yeah, yeah. Cruising Blast. I got it for $18 at Best Buy. I had a $5 coupon, otherwise it would have been like 20 something. Either way, it was on sale, so I said I had to have it. It's kind of resembling a cruising game. It's based off an arcade game from Nintendo that wasn't made by them. They haven't made an actual arcade game since, uh, that's like a Punch-Out parody. You know, like, arm wrestling, super arm wrestling, I think is what it was called. It has an annoying song, they go, cruising throughout the menu. This is kind of a sporadic entry, I'm sorry. We're done talking about cruising. Uh, this has been a hectic entry. Back to alphabetical status, it's Rune Factory 4 Special. Uh, this is a Rune Factory game, uh, originally on 3DS. I have barely played it. I feel like an asshole. I barely played this game. I specifically went to a GameStop in the boonies to pick this up, and I barely played it. Uh, it is a marvelous uh, release. Uh, yes, a marvelous. marvelous. They say that uh, in the beginning of the No More Heroes entries, which were also marvelous publications. And this is yet another one, but this one's actually developed by Marvelous. marvelous. Yes, I'm going to keep saying it like that because you can't stop me. Yes, indeed. It's it's a manual squad back again. Frick, I gotta fix that. Now it's fixed. It's got a beautiful background. It's got a, a beefy manual. And uh, yeah, it's 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 a Harvest Moon game, but fantasy with with fighting and whatnot. I'm waiting for them to do uh, Tides of Destiny. I think uh, I think that entry would be really cool to put on Switch. Instead, we have Rune Factory 4 to deal with. 
And uh, yeah, I need to play more of it. Otherwise, I can't really tell you what it's about. Next up is Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. This one I have played a decent amount. It's a sort of a uh, rice farming simulator slash action RPG. Typical sort of like quirky, marvelous, exceed whatever the frick game. Uh, the dub for this game is terrible. I strictly play with the sub. I didn't know that when I was going to play the game that the character, the main character of the story is a freaking brat and is awful. But who knows why they did that but i don't give a crap about story never have never will uh i mean but i guess that's not true i do care about some stories i've been trying my best to care about stories as of recent but this is not one of them the story in this game sucks and uh yeah i'm trying to learn my way around uh rice farming while also playing the action rpg kind of section of the game side scrolling you know uh, uh sort of uh 2d 0.5 D 2.5 D is the word I'm looking for. It is a graphically all right game. It doesn't look like trash, but it doesn't look good either. I imagine it looks good on other platforms. But yeah, um, this game is a uh, noise. And finally, for this segment of the video, it is Seabed. This is our first entry by East Asia Soft. This is again a. Uh, a company, another company I should say, that does limited releases, except for these are not real limited releases, only the limited editions are actually limited releases. These are, but these are numbered releases that come from East Asia Soft. This is another Yuri, although this is sort of a depressing sort of mystery style Yuri. Don't know how else to describe it because I don't want to spoil much about it. I really don't know the whole scope of the game. As you can see, if, it, if it'll zoom in, it's number 12. This is by Paleontology Soft. I don't know what the hell that means, but this is what it's by. Uh, let me show you the manual. I won't show you the, what's inside, because if I do, it'll spoil things. But yes, indeed, this is the uh, inside. It has a little Nintendo Switch outline, like not really akin to anything else I've seen manual wise, but it's interesting. It's more of an art book really than an actual manual. It's a visual novel. You don't really need much manualing anyway. But yes, uh, it's kind of depressing, honestly. It's kind of a depressing mystery sort of game. And uh, certainly uh, the complete opposite of the other Yuri game that I own. And uh, I'll be right back because I got one more to show you. It's going to be brief. I'm going to make it really quick because I want to get this the hell out of the way. Yes, I own this game. Yes, it is inappropriate. Yes, it is sort of like basically softcore porn. Do I care? No, but I had to point it out. Uh, do you want to see the manual? That's the manual. That's the inside. Not talking about it any further than that. Bye bye. Okay, next up is uh, Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne. HD remaster a bit of a mouthful I know this was originally a ps2 game being uh, ported to modern consoles such as the switch but also other consoles as well Shin Megami Tensei 3 is the third game well technically not the third there's also if uh, but it goes Shin Megami Tensei 1 Shin Megami Tensei 2 Shin Megami Tensei if uh, yes, and, the, and those games are not exactly localized in America. It's very annoying. Literally the only ever localized version of Shin Megami Tensei 1 is through an iOS port that was a GBA translation ported over to uh, iOS, but that is now defunct. That no longer exists, so there's no official way to play an officially translated version of the first game. In the second game, you're better off just uh, playing a fan translation. Speaking of that, they recently fan translated the PS1 version version of Shin Megami Tensei, the original. They still haven't translated the TurboGrafx CD or the Sega CD version, but who knows what will happen there. Going back to Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne, they didn't include the Dante DLC or the uh, bonus stuff from, from Maniac's Edition, which I think is kind of BS. Uh, instead, you just get the, uh, the uh, crossover character from the other version from Japan. I forget the name of the character. I'll put it up on the screen, whatever. Uh, yeah, Shin Megami Tensei 3 is an RPG. G, which is funny because typically I don't like RPGs, but I like this RPG. Story-wise, it is freaky deaky for sure. It is not exactly your typical story when it comes to RPGs, but it is your typical Shin Megami Tensei story, that's for sure. And uh, again, it's it's a very weird game. Weird things happen, spooky things happen, and it resembles sort of sort of a Pokemon Pokemon style of game, except for Shin Megami Tensei came first. It comes to monster capturing and using them in. Uh, battle. Which, by the way, Persona Strikers also uses the uh, monster capturing ability. Should have mentioned that in that part of the review. But, uh, yeah. Um, Shin Megami Tensei 3 is hard as balls. Even on the 
The lower difficulties, it's not exactly the easiest. I, 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 I want most of the DLC except for the ones that makes the game easier because I'm not a pu -pu 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 pussy. That's for damn sure. I would say Shin Megami Tensei 3 is a game for, for those who enjoy Atlas RPGs. Next up is the last of the super rare uh, games in my collection. Yes, that's right. That's freaking uh, Smoke and Sacrifice from Curve Digital and Super Rare. I've already mentioned Super Rare, so I'll, I will leave that topic alone. Uh, this game is interesting because it is super cheap normally when you don't buy it physically. That's why it wasn't exactly selling that well, and, and I bought it anyway because I like the game, but I wouldn't recommend buying it physical. Let's just put that out, put that out there right now. It is a sort of um, Don't Starve clone mixed with uh, sort of a uh, weird kind of Dresden doll sort of aesthetic. You know, it has this sort of uh, cultish underworld kind of vibe. But uh, yeah, it, you, you definitely play uh, a game that is very similar to something like Don't Starve. Um, but yeah, the game is story-wise kind of interesting. Uh, the basic summary is that you're on like a tiny little patch of fertile land and then you have to sacrifice your firstborn, but then years go by, and in the underworld you find out that maybe your maybe your son is alive, maybe he isn't. You have no idea. As a mother, you go down and try to fight the uh, evils within the underworld, and you try to uh, you know reclaim your son and reclaim the land, sort of thing. There's a lot of smoke in the game, hence why it's called smoke. And sacrifice and the sacrifice is obviously the son that you sacrificed. Manual squad hype. Yes, indeed. It's a uh, snipper clips plus. This is a release that is actually the package itself is a physical exclusive. Otherwise, you have to buy the game and the DLC separately. It's something that if you press the plus button and try to find in the eShop, it says this doesn't exist. I got this from Mercari. Uh, in general, I tend to avoid Mercari unless uh, there's a really good deal. Otherwise, I don't really use it very much because in general, I don't like it as much as eBay. But uh, it, it's all right overall. Not amazing. But this is one of the games I got on Mercari. Uh, this is interesting because for a Nintendo release, it actually does have a, uh, a backing, which normally Nintendo games do not have very good backings. Uh, normally they have very boring or very basic backings. I thought, the thought, and I thought that was interesting. Yeah, Snipper Clips is a game that is a puzzle game. Uh, one thing that irritates me about the game is that you can't record your uh, your puzzle playing sessions. I think it's kind of bullshit because, you know, I, I find a solution and I feel really clever, but I can't record it because the game's like, nope, you can't spoil the solution. Which in my opinion is stupid. Rayman Legends also does that as well, which I know I, know I mentioned earlier, uh, the game Rayman Legends, but I forgot to mention that Rayman Legends also doesn't let you record gameplay, which I think is also bullshit. I think any game that doesn't let you record gameplay is stupid through the uh, uh, capture button. Obviously, if you have a capture card, you can, you can record it whatever you want, but it's actually made by Super Flash Brothers. Those are uh, guys that I used to watch when I was younger. I used to watch their uh, OCs like talk about various things like Final Fantasy or going, going to Japan or Soul Calibur or whatever. Soul Coke. It's a cute game. Uh, I've, I've not been able to play with friends. I know there's, there's puzzles that you can only play multiplayer and I'd really like to play that with friends, but I haven't found the time or the friends that are able to do it. That'd be nice if I was able to do that. But overall, um, Snipper Clips Plus is a great game. It's not that expensive. I'd say pick it up if, if you can find it for cheap. Finally, in this batch of recordings, we have SNK Heroines uh, Tag Team Frenzy. Yes, indeed. It's, uh, it's an SNK game also published by uh, NIS America, although no special goodies inside. Um, it is a cool game. I think it's a cool party game. I wish more people played online. I think it kind of got a bad rep as a uh, fighting game because it's not exactly your typical fighting game. I don't think it's supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be more of a hyper casual experience. Definitely for people who enjoy the SNK style of game. But also some people who like fan service. I bought all the DLC even though I really shouldn't know because I, mean, I, I think the DLC practice is predatory. But I think those characters should have been included in the game for free. But 
but what can you do? The game itself is more of like a Smash clone sort of thing where you use basic com combos from certain binding combinations as opposed to doing like traditional combos through something like an actual fighting game. You switch between characters sort of akin to a Tekken tag tournament, uh, but there's party items kind of like uh, Smash as well. There's items that help you in battle, some useful, some not so useful. Uh, in general, the final boss is interesting because typically you, you require, you're required to, uh, you know, build up a meter in order to uh, do a special one, and then that special is used for when people are really low on health in the danger zone. Use that special, you finish the battle. But the boss itself has two health bars, and uh, in general, their two health bars are used as a sort of a buffer for when when they can attack and when they can use specials and when, when you can beat them sort of thing. Guess who's back, 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 back again, again, again. Shit, I can't go too long or else I'll get copyright claimed. I'm sure you told it might have already been copyright claimed. I mean, one of those Nintendo songs might have got dinged. I have no idea. Or one of the songs I'm going to be using in the future. Who knows? It's Story of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive Town. This was definitely inspired by, uh, not Harvest Moon, because that's what it originally was, but by the imitation of Harvest Moon, Stardew Valley. So really, it's just the, the successor to the original is aping off the successor, uh, in spirit, uh, Stardew Valley, if that makes any sense, because if anyone's not familiar with the history of Harvest Moon, or in this case, Story of Seasons, let me explain. So Natsume originally published a game called Harvest Moon on the Super Nintendo and therefore owns the rights to the phrase Harvest Moon. Because in Japan, the series is not called Harvest Moon, it's called something. I, I'll put it up on screen. Every subsequent Harvest Moon game would be called Harvest Moon blank of blank, whatever. The original idea of Harvest Moon was spearheaded by one guy. It was his vision to create this farming game with dating and whatnot. And then I guess at some point he got tired of making them. He left and then later on uh, the, the company kept making them in general, you know, under the Harvest Moon name, but I, but I guess what happened was Natsume wanted more money. I don't know what happened, but basically something fell through where the company that made uh, Harvest Moon ended up forming into, into Marvelous, previously called something else, I believe. Marvelous and Xseed, you know, were a joint publishing venture, and, and since then, uh, they publish every game under the title A Story of Seasons which is more similar to what it's called in Japan, I believe, which is why they chose it. That's that's actually, uh, if you play a Harvest Moon game that is made by Natsume for any console, like, after 3DS, basically, it's probably not actually a Harvest Moon game, because what you should be playing is Story of Seasons. To wrap this up, this is the most recent Story of Seasons game. It, like I said before, it's definitely inspired by, uh, by Stardew Valley. It takes uh, notes from it and uses it to make its own sort of unique twist on the game. I haven't played much of it, and I was told by somebody who has played more of it that it relies a bit too much on building and, and resource farming as opposed to actually like engaging with the town aspect and, and uh, actually like it, it tries to be more sort of like a Minecrafty sort of Terraria thing as opposed to, you know, Stardew Valley's kind of hybrid of that mixed with uh, the Harvest Moon elements. I think you can tell by the cover, looking at all these things that are going on on the actual cover itself, it has a beefy manual, but that's to be expected from Marvelous. Marvelous. Yes, I'm bringing it back. It's kind of a cute little uh, guise because it's kind of poised as a Olive Town tourist guide, which I think is kind of cute. I mean, I haven't played Rune Factor very much. I haven't played Story of Seasons very much. I mean, am I really a, a town life farm simulator fan, or am I not? This next game is a game I've included in a few Switch compilations that I've done. And again, I'm not sorry for doing a whole bunch of them as of recent. They're easy to pump out. I enjoy doing them. I'm gonna keep doing them. And uh, this is the game in question. It's <laughs> it's backwards. It's Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. Let me clarify some things about the actual game itself. It is a Unity uh, based remake of the original two games. I guess Deluxe as well, with uh, not as good physics, doesn't have the same octagonal sort of movement and, uh, and ball uh, velocity, as well as 
uh, ability of finagling in the uh, in the original. There are microtransactions, which I don't like. I wish everything came included in the base game. Yes, indeed, I did buy the uh, non-special edition, which I get there's only one edition, but but I, yeah, I bought the game without the slipcase and the stupid art book because it would take up too much room and it's annoying. So uh, no art book to show here. And uh, I don't know, I mean, it's a game with a monkey. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. I'm a banana eating monkey. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, oh. Ah, ah. What do you want me to say? It's Super Monkey Ball. First, we got Sushi Strikers Way of the Sushido. I mentioned this game a long time ago in the video. Definitely a long time ago in actual days. I mentioned that, I, that uh, this game I got for $12, which I indeed did get for $12 on eBay. Now you can get it for even cheaper. For being a Nintendo published game made by a Nintendo studio, you think it would go for more, but really no. It's one of the few games that didn't maintain its value at all. Like new, you can, you can get this game for ridiculously cheap. Really, like, I mean, is it worth it? I only played it literally once. I'm not even kidding you. And then that was it. I never touched it ever again. Looks cool, I guess. I mean, graphically, it's okay. I know it's based off a 3DS game. A 3DS game which again is like literally the same game, was cheaper than the freaking like Switch version. For some reason they upcharged the Switch version despite being almost exactly the same. It's kind of ridiculous when you think about it. Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE Encore. I know a freaking mouthful of a title, I swear to God. But yeah, um, this game I played actually a little bit more than I played Sushi Strikers, but not much more actually. It, it's a, it's an RPG, which you know, I am an RPG guy unlike Scott the Waz. Uh, I used to not be an RPG guy just like Scott there was. I'm the same age as him by the way. I mean I know, I know you probably couldn't tell by the way we look. I also have more hair than him. Hashtag burn! He's balding. Basically Tokyo Mirage Sessions is like a sort of original uh, Fire Emblem slash Shin Megami Tensei style game that I really like. Um, I think the story is kind of interesting. I, I can't wait to play more of it. Um, yeah um, this, this game is one of the few Wii U games before the Switch that I think is, is deserving to be you know put, put on a pedestal because the original didn't sell well on Wii U and was completely forgotten about. This is basically just the, the, the original version because nobody played the Wii U version. It, it, need, it needs more love. And finally, on today's lightning round, we have Toho Kabuto First Battle V. There's only two versions of this game. There's the original and one for Vita that was ported over to Switch. Hence why it's V, not because of Phi, because of Vita. Yes, um, this game is a cool Toho sort of uh, fighting style game with shooting elements 3D wise. Um, it's literally just the PC version which I played to try it out. I had to find some really obscure link to play the game, but I played it. I, I ran it and this is basically the same game, just upgraded. I mean, I don't know why I just didn't just go ahead and just buy it. I mean, because I bought it off Mercari, but I was really hesitant to buy it because I thought, you know, it wouldn't be very good. It's an NIS release. It's one of their early releases where they didn't put any goodies or good stuff in there. They just left uh, a basic ass box with like literally almost nothing inside besides a bunch of just boring ass text. Which nobody likes, truth be told. I mean, this is before NS really got a foothold on the collector's market like they do now. So, uh, yeah, um, Switch is now booming, and so that's why they upped their game. Take two. The recording fucked up last time. So, fucker, enjoy my robot voice. Trigger Witch for Life Bigger Witch. Published by East Vizazzo. We're approaching the end, people. Strap in, because this is the last few games. I say few, I mean, I 
I think if you're counting by now, you'll know how much is left. Anyway, next up is we're finally at the W. That being Witch Spring 3, Refine the Story of a Rudy, or I Rudy. I don't know how to say it. It's not exactly an English word. Let's put it that way. Yes, this is originally a mobile game. It had microtransactions, I believe, in the original version, but on the Switch version, they got rid of it. But it's actually a good mobile game. It's like a good RPG with uh, light sort of crafting elements. It has sort of like upgrading like familiar elements as well. It follows the plot of a witch named Arudi or Irudi, I don't know what the hell her name actually is. And basically she uh, encounters people outside of her witch hut. Adventure ensues. And basically from there you figure out what you're gonna do to get back to where you once were and helping your friends that you make along the way. Yes indeed, this game is very basic when it comes to graphics. It has quite beautiful little artwork right here. Let me get closer so I can show you that. Um, yeah, Witch Spring 3, look at that, it's so beautiful. Now unfortunately, it just has artwork on the back, no manual. But I like this package. It's actually uh, published by Inning Games, which uh, I really want to buy more stuff from them. I just just haven't found something that I, I think is worth the money yet. But they, they make very good games. Uh, at least they publish very good games in my opinion. Now we're at Y. Yes, there's no X game. But there is a Y game. It's E's. What number is this? This is 9. E's 9. Monstrum Nox. Packed Edition. And believe it or not, it's manual squad hype let's get that out of the way yeah like like i said before it actually has a code just like a lot of the other nice games that i can't show otherwise you'd be able to steal it uh but yeah if you look inside it actually has an alternate cover on the back this is an nis release hence why it has all the goodies inside so it's a late nis release uh, i played ease 8 uh i thought it was all right but ease 9 seems to be a lot better it seems to be more sort of up my style i played something like tokyo xanadu which this definitely reminds me of because it's made by the same studio and in general I, I love the style of a uh, rpg and action rpg that falcom puts out same thing with the legends of cold steel and all that I, I like those games too although i barely played the legends of cold steel i know it's it's crazy right considering the the fan base for that game is so rabid so rabid indeed not braving rabbits just rabid this game follows our titular protagonist did you just say tit that's a game sack reference Adol, that's the name of the protagonist. I had to look inside the manual to find out. Yes, you play as your as your uh, typical protagonist in every Ease game, Adol. Although he's kind of like Zelda and Link in the sense that I say that, you know, I almost called Link Zelda. Each generation, uh, a new um, a new Zelda comes about, a new Link comes about, a new Ganondorf and Ganon comes about, and so on and so forth. So in the same way, a new, new Adol comes every generation as to how I look at it. It's not the same Adol in each game. Although that might be entirely BS and that just might be my head cannon. Who knows? Uh, yes, um, the music in this game is great. The graphics are actually pretty decent for Switch. Pretty good, actually, in my opinion. It wouldn't be good anywhere else, but Switch, I think they're just fine. Hi, Train, what's up? I'm Matt. Hey guys, what's up? It's raining now. So we got the last two gains for you here. First up, and second to last up it's Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution and guess what comes inside Yu-Gi-Oh! cards Woo! and a little switch icon right here it's a Yu-Gi-Oh! game I previously owned a Yu-Gi-Oh! game for the GBA which I, I considered the best Yu-Gi-Oh! game I own but this surpasses it it is a Konami game without loot boxes Without bullshit, without pachinkos, no microtransactions, no DLC in general. It comes with all the DLC from the previous version. It's feature complete, it's it's a reasonable price, and it's feature packed. Like, what is wrong with Konami? How can they do this awesome ass thing and not do anything else right? It's like that's the, one of the few things they don't fuck up is Yu-Gi-Oh! How? How do they not fuck up Yu-Gi-Oh? It contains all the uh, scenarios from all the anime up until this point. Obviously the current anime they can't 
show entirely, otherwise they'd be spoiling things. But other than that, you know, it's pretty cool that they have all the Yu-Gi-Oh stuff, you know, in one package. It's really cool. And I've showed clips of it on my channel before, so you definitely get to see what it's like playing the game. I mean, I usually fumble my way through Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm not exactly the most advanced player, but I make do. In general, I would say pick this up. It is a freaking steal. Pick it up. Last, and actually I would say almost least, is Zoids uh, Wild Blast Unleashed. Yes, it is a another anime-based game. I don't, I've never seen the anime. It's some kids show. It's basically a 3D fighter, similar to like the Naruto games that I, I dearly love, made by CyberConnect. It's kind of like that, except for it's not made by CyberConnect. It's sort of a Gundam style, like animal mech anime. I've never heard of it, but basically, it has an extensive campaign where you can play, uh, you can play um, mech games and have lots of fun beating people up with your special moves and spam and stuff. So yeah, um, story sucks, but it's a kid's show. What do you expect? I'll see you in the next video. Peace. It's like, just kidding. I tricked you. Woo. Now we're on to the Japanese style of game. And first is a Ryakuma game. I don't know what it's called. I'll put it up on screen like I always do. Yep, uh, this is a game for Babby. It's a little bitty like Animal Crossing style game mixed with like, you know, Project Diva mini games and you know, little playground shit that you basically just play with cute little animals. It's very bare bones. I overpaid the shit out of it. I bought it off a Japanese website and imported it. It took, it went, it came by really fast, but goddamn, was it so expensive? But it was cheaper to get it through the online store than it was through actually like going through Amazon or eBay or whatever. So yeah, uh, in general, uh, don't pick this up. This is dumb. Pamper baby. Next up is a game which recently actually saw a Western release, although no physical Western release. Although the actual physical cartridge doesn't come with an English version, which is really freaking annoying because I paid out the ass for it. I also paid for it on that Japanese website I just mentioned. Uh, yes, this is called Shin. I'm looking at the title on another screen. That's how long the freaking title is. Shin Chan, Me and the Professor on Summer Vacation, The Endless Seven Day Journey. This is based off a series that was previously Japanese exclusive from a a very small company called Neos Corporation. It's basically a predecessor slash around the same time a uh, sir to uh, Animal Crossing, but it takes place over a, over a vacation. They, they were planning on doing a winter vacation one. For the most part, it's either fall or summer or spring. In sunny times, you take a vacation, you go to a separate town. In this case, it's based off the Shin Chan property. Yes, indeed. You basically just uh, do little fun uh, tasks and just walk around and have fun collecting shit and occasionally doing mini games. It's very short, very cozy. Uh, does this have a manual? No, it has a code. And the code is, as always, is expired. Does the other game have a code? Let me find out. It does indeed have a code. It's right here. Although I don't think you can use it. If you could, go ahead and use it. I don't give a shit. It comes with one of those weird Japanese post office shit that they come with. I don't know why they come with it. Finally, and this is actually finally, like the finale of this video, and then I can finally uh, process it, upload it, make the thumbnail, everything, be done. Katana Kami by Spike Chunsoft. It's the other company, Acquire. Acquire is the other company that makes it. It's based off the Way of the Samurai uh, property. It's a spinoff of that, and it's kind of like a Souls-like, except for it's like a dungeon crawler sort of mystery dungeon game, but it's got sword mechanics, and it's got a debt mechanics, and you help, help save somebody's daughter, and there's ghosts and spooky shit and whatnot, and you go through a tree, and also it has like asynchronous multiplayer, just like Dark Souls and the Japanese fan base that plays it still does to this day and I've gone in and played sessions where I've trolled Japanese players and uh, killed them and shit and, and be a dick because I'm that kind of guy and uh, so they probably don't like me very much but it's actually a great time I really like it uh, it has a bounty system where um, if somebody's like a real asshole and if you kill them you get a lot of money which can help pay off debt and whatnot I don't know what the end game looks like but yeah I mean it's pretty freaking cool and underrated in my opinion bye